So today we're going to take a look at the LG 43UD79. It's a 43 inch, um, very large format 4K Ultra HD monitor that is designed and intended uh, to allow users to hook multiple mach machines or devices into one large panel, primarily for productivity use, rather than having multiple monitors hooked to multiple devices um, on your desk. This review was sponsored by a very own WSGF Ultimate Monitor Stand. It's the only monitor stand on the market designed to grow with you in your gaming rig. It supports 3x1 landscape with up to 27 inch panels, 1 over 3 or 3 over 1 um, with 4 27 inch panels, and it also supports 5x1 portrait with up to 25 inch panels. You can see more about the WSGF stand at wsgf.org slash stand. So I previously ran um, a 43 inch ultra wide uh, Dell panel running at 3440 by 1440p um, on my desk with the intention of using it with multiple uh, devices. I also had above that in a three over one configuration, three 25 inch 1440p devices. Uh, in reality, I never used those much, rarely turned them on except to do uh, the odd detailed report here for the WSGF. And when you split a 43 inch ultra wide display with a picture by picture, either vertically or horizontally, you end up with sort of squarish um, aspect ratios this way and really narrow strips this way. And so I never ended up doing that because it wasn't really feasible for uh, daily usage. With the advent of these 43 inch uh, 16 by nine aspect ratio monitors, splitting that, uh, that display horizontally for the two strips is essentially two 1080p panels side by side. Splitting it vertically is two 1080p panels one over the other. Both of these configurations are uh, more in line with what Windows and its applications expects, and Windows tends to be more comfortable handling uh, these aspect ratios as does um, Apple OS X. On these 43 inch panels, you can also game in 4K on them, and then you can use custom resolutions which is what I do to put a 21 by nine aspect ratio image on the screen. So for me, the form factor really fits um, all of my needs and checks all of my boxes. I can have essentially four 1080p screens for productivity um, and daily driving usage. And then I can game at 4K if I choose to, but more commonly at uh, 21 by nine with a custom aspect resolution, or I can even try the uh, dual wide or super wide 1080p that Samsung is now touting with their uh, really large 49 inch curved panels. So liking the form factor and having a really grown accustomed to it over the last four months, the question is, does this specific model meet my needs and is it a good value for the price? So the panel is spec'd pretty well. It's 4K 3840 by 2160. It's an IPS 60 hertz panel though I was able to overclock up to 68 hertz. LG claims a five milliseconds gray to gray response time, 350 nits of brightness, and a mega contrast ratio, which is their marketing term for an infinite contrast ratio or a million to one contrast ratio, which we all know is ridiculous and meaningless. Um, and we'll see what that ends up with in practice. From a port's perspective, we have a one display port 1.2, a USB Type-C with alternate display uh, mode supported and four HDMI. Two of those are HDMI 2.0, so they support 4K at 60 hertz, and two are uh, a DisplayPort one or sorry HDMI 1.4, which means it only supports 4K at 30 hertz, or you can go lower to say 1440p or 1080p at 60 hertz. There is no rotate, swivel, or height adjustment; only tilt. Although tilt is quite easy with the large spring mechanism that's included, and it was much easier to tilt than the Dell model. It's about 27 pounds without the stand, and which makes it much lighter than the Dell offering. If you want any ergonomic adjustments beyond what you can get, which is essentially the tilt, you're going to need some sort of platform or a monitor arm or the wall mount. Um, I ended up going with and using an Ergotech 7 Flex HD in an attempt to be able to get some height adjustment and uh, get it in a good ergonomic position. There really wasn't enough height on the arm itself for this big of a panel, and I had to use a 12 inch extension, um, or, or sorry, a six inch extension that they offer to raise it up a, 
um, a little bit. At that point, you may want to consider wall mounting, which is what I've ended up uh, doing here for my long-term solution. The monitor also features a 10 watt speakers with what LG calls rich bass. They are very good speakers, especially for a monitor. It offers uh, both picture by picture and picture in picture modes. Uh, there are many options available. It comes with LG's uh, split screen software 2.0, which offers a number of, of different configurations. And I will put together a video detailing uh, both the picture and picture, picture by picture and the on screen functionality. And when that's available, we'll link it uh, somewhere here, wherever it goes. OSD, it's the traditional LG OSD and it has the little joystick uh, down here that you can use. So you may think including a remote control on a PC desktop monitor is sort of frilly or overkill or not needed, but I will say this has made using this panel uh, a much better experience rather than have to use the fiddly little joystick underneath and navigate deep into the OSD at times for volume adjustments, input selection, and changing which input I'm using um, on the picture by picture, and that's the functionality I use most of all. This is just so much easier uh, than the little nub joystick in the OSD. So when we look at the Spider results here, we can see that the Spider 5 Elite Plus software and measuring puck gives the panel an overall 4.0 out of 5.0 rating. Um, from a color gamut perspective, we are a 100% of sRGB and 77% of Adobe RGB. From a tonal response perspective, uh, there are four gamma modes on the panel, uh, mode one, mode two, mode three, mode four. Um, it defaults to mode two, which is a gamma of 2.2, and the other modes offer gammas of 2.0, 2.3, and 2.4. From a brightness and contrast perspective, uh, the brightness maxes out at 308, and that is compared to the claim of 350. So we're quite a bit under spec, but I will tell you that uh, 300 nits on a panel this size is more than bright enough. At 75%, you're at uh, 236 nits, 50% is 162, 25% is 85. And for 25% and above, your contrast ratio is right about 640, 650 to one which again is a far cry from that uh, marketing fluff of, of mega or million to one. For the OSD settings, warm is a white point of 7,800 Kelvin. Medium is 60, I'm sorry, medium is 9,100 Kelvin. Cool is 12,000 Kelvin. So from a color uniformity perspective, the spider only rates it at a uh, 3.5 to one at close to the recommended brightness of 63%. Uh, there is sort of some hot spots that create a T within the panel across the top and down the center. Uh, from a luminance uniformity, um, again, we get some dimmer spots at the top right and lower left. These really aren't easy to see and practice and using because we're talking a difference of seven or eight uh, nits. And so even though there's a variance there and it's not perfect, um, in real practical use, um, it's really difficult to see the difference. From a color accuracy standpoint, there is that one blue that tends to be um, overshooting the mark, but overall we get an average of a 1.41 uh, Delta E. And then again, overall monitor rating is 4.0, which is certainly not bad for a panel of this size um, at a $600 price point. So from a positive aspect, um, about this monitor. The primary one is that I just love the form factor. Um, I've had 4K displays before and at lower resolutions I really didn't see the point. I really didn't like them. Uh, often you had to turn up the window scaling to 125-150% which negated a lot of the resolution that you were gaining but at 43 inches you don't need to do that. Um, I also love the versatility of the picture by picture. Like I've got the two stripes here and I will say that both Windows 10 and OS 10 natively recognize this double white aspect ratio. I don't have to do any funky affinity or surround setups to do this. It just pops up naturally. And then also uh, one really cool implementation that they did, which I'll go into when I, I deep dive into the software, is that with the screen change software, if you go picture in picture, your inset image, say it's here and you're watching some sports game or 
uh, maybe you have, I don't know, a Twitch stream or something going in the background and you don't want it to completely block out what's on your main image, you can actually set a transparency on that. So you've got lots of flexibility and lots of little cool things that LG thought of in how they chose to implement um, features or usability on this uh, large surface. Uh, this also has really good panel performance. You know, the Spider gave it a four out of five. Um, it's not perfect, but again, the street price on this or the retail on this is $600. So we shouldn't be expecting professional quality um, images and displays out of a $600 panel. And so balancing the price with the performance, I think it's top notch. While I do really like the monitor, not everything on it is perfect. So due to the size, you will need a deeper desk. Um, so that you, you know, you can sit far enough back to really see all of it at once without having to crane your neck. Um, I do wish it had a higher refresh rate, you know, maybe even just if we could get to 75 hertz and say add free sync to that. Um, there is, and probably this is one of the, the, the biggest negatives, uh, there is a little shadow along the edges here. And I've read that it has to do with how the actual um, LCD panel is set back. Uh, from the glass, from the, the front protective screen. So you do get about a quarter inch or so of a shadow on the panel here. Um, and it's more pronounced, you know, as you sit closer. If you sit back a little bit, especially say if you're gaming, you, you may not notice it. I only really notice it um, on a daily basis because I have my, my dock on OS 10 over here and the little dots to show what applications are open are hidden and I can't see those. So one of the areas where I'm not totally sold or not totally happy with uh, some choices is with the ports. There's only one DisplayPort 1.2. There's no mini Display ports On the HDMI front, I don't know why we still have any HDMI 1.4. This is better than the Dell where we didn't get any HDMI 2.0s, but I don't know why you would have any inputs here that don't take full advantage of the panel. It just makes no sense to me. I would have rather seen those two HDMI 1.4s traded for, say, two mini display ports. That would have given us three display ports, two HDMI, and then the USB Type-C. Uh, that seems a little more modern and forward-looking. So one thing to note on the USB Type-C is that if you're using it for video, um, you can't use it for data transfer, at least I couldn't. When I tried to update the firmware on the monitor, and I don't know if this is just an issue of trying to update the firmware while you're running a display signal, but I could not update the firmware with my MacBook Pro hooked up uh, to the LG with the USB Type-C. It simply would not let me do it. So what I had to do was take that cable, get an adapter so that I could have the uh, Type-C on the end of the, the panel, and then get an adapter to go to USB 3 Type-A, the you know normal rectangular one on my PC, and then update the firmware like that. And while this, you know, probably won't be an issue for desktop users, I can see this being an issue for notebook users where they may be limited on port selection. And then finally, uh, one more negative, which uh, didn't impact me. I guess I'm not sensitive to it, but the panel does use PWM uh, strobing or flickering to adjust the brightness. The Dell uses PWM under a certain point. They had put out a firmware fix that didn't use or that went from using PWM all the time to say just using it under 70%. And so maybe LG can do something like that here, but that is certainly a negative that any potential user needs to be aware of. So would I recommend the LG 43 UD79? Uh, the answer is yes. I love the form factor as I've said many times. Um, I think the feature set compared to the pricing or at least the MSRP is a good balance. Uh, the recommended pricing on this one, street pricing, is only $600. Um, some people initially got it on sale for even $100 less. Though with limited supply now, it's pushed the price up to $750 or $800. Um, even then, I still think it's a, a decent value if you can afford to uh, wait and uh, buy once the pricing settles down. Maybe LG can get some more on the market. Do that. But I do think it's an excellent buy. Um, I think it like it did for me, can replace multiple uh, monitors on your desk. It can serve multiple uses. It can fit a wide variety of productivity needs um, and meet your gaming needs unless you are uh, really a high re refresh rate uh, gamer, do a lot of FPSs or 
uh, do any competitive gaming. I will say, though, that I would be willing to pay a little more to have some of the negatives removed. If we could get a curved panel on here, which I think would help with the shadow, or maybe uh, you know fix whatever's in the assembly or design that creates that shadow. If we could get rid of the PWM, get that slightly higher refresh rate, 75 hertz and or a variable refresh rate in there. If even we could get a couple of those things, I would uh, certainly think it's still to be a good value at say $200 more, um, a street price of uh, $799 or so. It's, it's a good value here. Um, actually, I think it's a great value here, and I still think it would be a great value if we fixed a couple of those issues or LG fixed a couple of those issues and even raised the price point from there. So thanks for watching. We will see you next time around. Be sure to like the video if you liked it. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. Uh, subscribe here, turn on the notify, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, all that kind of stuff, and we will see you later.